guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about a very interesting topic and that is the complications of diabetes. So let's get started. So let's begin with a brief introduction to the topic. So the majority of patients who suffer from chronic uncontrolled diabetes will go on to develop complications of their disease over time. It is therefore important to educate the patient and stress the importance of good diabetes control. If patients live a healthy, active lifestyle, it is possible for them to go a number of decades complication-free. So as this little speech bubble suggests, the majority of patients who only suffer from chronic uncontrolled diabetes, meaning they have chronically high blood sugar levels, will develop some sort of complications to their disease. So that is why patient education is so important and we need to educate the patients and try to prevent the advanced stages in which complications do set in. So now that we know why some of these complications may manifest over long-term uncontrolled diabetes, let's take a closer look at some of these complications. So the first complication we're going to talk about is called diabetic ketoacidosis. So when there is insufficient insulin in the body and the body cannot use the glucose available, the body uses fats for energy instead. And the body produces ketones from the breaking down of fats. So our bodies cannot handle high amounts of ketones, and while it can get rid of some in the urine, ketones may eventually build up, causing the blood to become too acidic. And this can lead to severe complications, which is called diabetic ketoacidosis. So in diabetic ketoacidosis, we have increased levels of acid in the patient's body, and without treatment, this can actually lead to a diabetic coma. So some of the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis include breathlessness, a fruity smelling breath, vomiting and feeling sick, and a parched mouth. So in this first complication, we talk about diabetic ketoacidosis. So ketoacidosis actually sets in because the body is unable to use the glucose available, even though we have these high amounts of glucose in the blood in most patients with diabetes we can't use the glucose available. So the body will need some sort of energy to fuel its various processes. So because of this, it looks to the fats for energy. And when the fats are broken down or the fatty acids are broken down, they produce something called ketones. And the ketones can be used as a fuel to drive many processes in the body. But then we also have this acidic environment which is created because the ketones are acidic agents. So when we have too much of acid in the blood, the patient can actually go into a coma, they'll go into shock, and then they'll go into a coma. So this is actually a very severe complication and is usually seen in patients who suffer from type 1 diabetes. So the second complication we're going to talk about are skin complications. So skin complications include diabetic dermopathy, and here we have oval circular scaly light brown patches on the legs. And this is what the image of diabetic dermopathy actually looks like. We can also have something called acanthosis nigricans. And here we have raised brown patches which appear on the neck, the groin and the armpits. And these are shown in these images here. We see here on the neck and in the armpits. We can also have something called diabetic blisters. And these usually develop on the extremities and are actually painless. So as we see in this image down here, this is actually what a diabetic blister or a diabetic bulla looks like. So moving on, the third complication we're going to talk about is nerve damage to the patient. So diabetic patients suffer from something called peripheral neuropathy and autonomic neuropathy. So in peripheral neuropathy, here there is severe nerve damage in the feet and the hands, which leads to numbness, tingling or weakness in the extremities. So because these patients suffer from nerve damage, they will also suffer from multiple episodes of tingling, weakness, numbness in their feet and especially their hands. And this can also cause them to get hurt easily because when you can't feel or you can't actually sense very well in those areas, they are more susceptible to injury because you don't know when you're stepping on a piece of glass or you're bumping your foot. So imagine your foot being numb all the time. It will definitely make it more susceptible to injury. So that is a very scary thing in patients who suffer from diabetic neuropathy because if they're more prone to injuries, they can suffer greatly because they also don't heal very well because of the levels of high sugar. And these traumatic spots or sores actually become infected over time, which leads to even more problems for them. So another thing they can suffer from is autonomic neuropathy. And here the autonomic processes in the body start to dysfunction. So the patient loses bladder control, 
sexual function and they begin to have digestive problems. So the fourth complication we're going to explore is the diabetic foot ulcers. So due to constant damage to the nerves and circulation problems in the patient's feet, this often leads to foot problems such as diabetic foot ulcers. And when these ulcers form, they may become infected. And if the infection worsens, the patient may actually have to have their foot or leg amputated. So that's why you'll see a lot of patients who have diabetes or especially long-term diabetes may even lose a limb over the seriousness of the disease. So now let's explore some eye complications. So patients may develop diabetic retinopathy and here the damage is caused to the blood vessels in the back of the eye, which is the retina, which leads to vision loss and possible blindness. So having diabetes and constantly high blood pressure increases the risk of glaucoma, which is when fluid pressure builds up in the eye by 40% and cataract, which is the clouding of the lens of your eye, by 60%. So if we take a closer look at these images at the bottom of my screen, we see what the normal eye looks like in the normal blood vessels which make up the eye. And then we see what happens in diabetic retinopathy. So here the damage is caused to the blood vessels in the back of the patient's eye, which leads to vision loss and possible blindness. So we have these cotton wool spots, we have aneurysms in these tiny vessels, we will have abnormal growth of blood vessels, hemorrhages, and hard exudates, which form, and all these are classed under the term diabetic retinopathy. We then have cataracts, which may form in diabetic patients, and this is when the lens of the patient's eye becomes cloudy. And of course, glaucoma, which is the increased pressure within the eye. So the fluid pressure builds up, and the high pressure will actually damage the optic nerve, which will also lead to decreased vision and possibly blindness in the patient. Another complication that we can talk about in patients who suffer from diabetes is heart and blood vessel diseases. So over time, the uncontrolled blood sugar levels lead to damage in the patient's arteries, and diabetes also tends to raise the patient's triglycerides and LDL cholesterol levels, which is the bad cholesterol in the body. And this type of cholesterol clogs up the patient's arteries and makes them more susceptible to having a heart attack or a stroke. So below is just a little image which explores the correlation of heart disease with diabetes. The first one says that diabetic patients are two to three times more likely to develop heart disease. The second one states that 30% of diabetic patients also have coronary stents which are implanted each year. And of all the patients who suffer from diabetes in the US, 280,000 of them also suffer from heart attacks annually. These patients have a two to four times higher heart disease morbidity and mortality rate. And 60% of all patients who suffer from diabetes have a chance of dying from heart disease. So we see that there's a very big correlation between diabetes as well as heart disease. So another complication that a lot of diabetic patients suffer from is periodontal disease, which is also called gum disease. So patients who suffer from diabetes are more likely to develop gum disease because they have more plaque and produce less saliva, higher blood sugar levels, which results in having more sugar in the mouth, some loss of collagen, which is a protein that's in the gum tissue, and poor circulation in the gums. So this is a set of healthy teeth and gums, and over time, as the diabetes worsens, so does the gum disease in these patients. So another complication that a lot of diabetic patients suffer from is sexual problems, so high blood sugar levels for a period of time damages the patient's blood vessels and nerves, including the ones that supply their sexual organs. So this can restrict the amount of blood flowing to their sexual organs, which cause them to lose sensation. And this in turn causes them to have difficulty in getting aroused. Depression. So studies have shown that patients with diabetes are at a higher risk of experiencing depression. And finally, the last complication we're going to discuss today is gastroparesis. So when blood sugar levels remain high over a long period of time, damage to the vagus nerve occurs. So the vagus nerve is the nerve that controls the movement of food through the digestive tract. So gastroparesis arises when the vagus nerve is damaged or stops working. And when this happens, the stomach takes longer than normal to empty its contents. And this is called delayed gastric emptying or gastroparesis. So we have the vagus nerve which runs down here and actually controls the motility of the stomach as well as the other GI organs. And when we have 
patients who suffer from diabetes, because of the damage to that vagus nerve, they have delayed gastric emptying. So if that stomach is unable to contract to push the food out, so as you can see, the stomach actually contracts at these various points to push all the contents out of it so that it may flow into the intestine with ease. But when we have this nerve that's damaged, we actually don't have those areas of contraction occurring. So this causes delayed gastric emptying because if the food is not being pushed out of here forcibly, it's just going to chill here for a very long time. And we're going to have a delayed emptying process. So these patients usually suffer from nausea and vomiting, heartburn, a feeling of fullness, bloating, loss of appetite, weight loss, and stomach spasms. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on the complications of diabetes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please don't forget to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.